In your book, you also say that technology will only be as good as the people that it does the least for. Yes. Could you elaborate on what that means? Sure. So um, that kind of draws me back and echoes what I said earlier about having people with dyslexia or people with autism or people with ADHD at the table. Um, If they're not creating these tools to help their community, how are we expected to to know exactly what they need? You know, it's almost like um, a husband thinking he knows what his wife needs without asking her or without uh, including her in the process of him going to pick out a gift for her. You Mm -hmm. know, Um, I see that a lot with uh, companies that are um, able-bodied people making decisions for people with different abilities. And it's like, yeah, I, I get where you're going. I understand that this is something that you want to spearhead or um, make sure that you are the face for. But I think it's so important that these tools and these technologies that are being created every day, these innovations, that they center around those who will be using them. Mm -hmm. Just so I can be clear, in your book, are you also suggesting that people with dyslexia um, take jobs in technology too? So not only providing their insight, but contributing to the workforce. Absolutely. There are um, statistics and research that shows that people who are dyslexic, they are outside of the box thinkers, they are deductive reasoners, um, they are people who can look long term at things. They have a very keen point of view. Um, I think of Richard Branson and um, even heard that Albert Einstein had some qualities of dyslexia. These individuals should certainly be bringing their gifts to the workforce, not only through creating innovations, but being there to support innovations. Mm -hmm. And Jeanette, you're also currently working with Microsoft. So tell us about that project. So I currently work um, with Microsoft, the TEALS program, where I am helping bridge that gap and closing that opportunity um, void that exists. So there are a lot of people, those with dyslexia, with autism, ADHD, those that are traditionally learning, um, those that meet that intersection of being, um, you know, African American and, um, you know, female. I think about those individuals at that intersection. Um, but the, the gap in tech is, is so vast. So I help close that gap. I help work with high school teachers, high school students, and teach them how to code, teach them how to program, teach them about computer science so that they can make informed decisions as to whether or not they are interested in pursuing a career in technology. Mm -hmm. That's definitely where the future is headed, as you mentioned in your book. The future is tech, mm-hmm. you know, and, and something as as large in scale as COVID-19 is definitely an indicator that technology is is very important. Who knew we'd be on Zoom calls and, and webinar jam and teams like who knew that this would be our lives? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wonder how. Zoom and just a lot of screen time is affecting people with dyslexia? So I've seen people use different um, glasses and optical equipment to help them. It's a blue light that is supposedly effective for um, those on that dyslexia spectrum. I haven't used it yet, or I don't know anyone who has, but I've been looking at research lately because it's become a popular topic. And usually when a topic is, is pretty popular, I like to, to dive into it and look up the statistics, look up research, um, see the um, reviews, and really dive into how it works. So I think that'll be um, something really important that um, we'll see a lot more of. These spectacles that emit different color lights that 
are supposed to, you know, calm or to relax the weary eyes because those with dyslexia are spending a lot of effort and time looking at screens, rereading them so they can make that connection with the comprehension. Um, but then again, you also have audio books and, and speech to text tools that have been helpful so that they don't have to stare at screens and um, try to understand that verbiage. Mm-hmm. That's great. You've been watching Autism Knows No Borders. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Also, we'd love to hear from you, so let us know what you think in the comments section. Click here to watch this interview in its entirety. You can also find us on your favorite podcast app. Tune in each week for engaging conversations of how people across the globe are inspiring change and building community. Thanks for watching. Take care.